wide eye I'm proud to be an islander And here's the reason why I'm free as the wind And the waves wash the sands There's no place I would rather be Than here in Newfoundland I spent some time in New York State And early lost my mind The city life's too fast for me Nobody had the time To met this being a passion Life was all that I could see But maybe up in New York State But I know that good for me I'm a Newfoundlander born and bred I'll be one till I die I'm proud to be an islander And here's the reason why I'm free as the wind And the waves wash the sands There's no place I would rather be Than here in Newfoundland Got a country all the fits And say the day on Labrador In Willard and Indian Harbour Where my father fished before And if they want to fight for her Well I'll surely make a stand And they'll regret the day they try to think I'm a Newfoundlander born and bred, I'll be one till I die. I'm proud to be an islander, and there's a reason why. I'm free as the wind and the waves wash the sands. There's no place I would rather be than here in Newfoundland. screeched in here tonight, hopefully becoming right proper honorary Newfoundlander. Yes? Yes. yes? yes. Before we start, I would like to know your names and where you're from. We'll start with you. Yvonne Shunk uh, slash Hiscock. I guess. <laughs> uh, Ontario. Yvonne from Ontario! And we, have, we have Jim Shunk Hiscock <laughs> from Ontario. Jen from Ontario! Lauren Magalis uh, from Ontario. Lauren from Ontario. And, and Chase Magalis from Ontario. And Chase from Ontario. So, the idea of the ceremony is to try to teach you all a little bit about Newfoundland. When all is said and done, you're going to be called Honorary Newfoundland. I have paperwork done up for you. Do not lose the paperwork once you receive it, as you can get into more places with that than most passports these days. <laughs> as we're about to begin, I should first let you know that I am not the son of a fisherman or a lighthouse keeper. I don't eat fish three times a day, and I don't drink screech. Ever. Oh, great. Thank you. Can't wait. Not before noon on weekdays. I'm not the boy that build a boat. I'm not the boy that sail there. But I got a boat with a five four cutty and it's got high top sails and I painted it green and it's the prettiest boat that you've ever seen. I had a premier once and his name was Brian Tobin and he went to war with Spain over something called a turbot. I'm not quite sure what a turbot looks like, but I'll be damned if somebody from Spain's gonna come take it away. <laughs> I believe in kitchen parties, not raves. I believe in icebergs and blue stars, and that the puffin is a true, proud, and noble bird. 
Now, a scoff is a dance in a Newfoundland, a blue star is a beer, and it's pronounced Newfoundland, not Newfoundland or New Finland. <laughs> Newfoundland is the oldest settlement in North America, the youngest province in Confederation, and the only rock you can party on. My name's Skipper Lukey, and I is a Newfoundlander. of the original settlement here in Newfoundland came from two provinces of Ireland and three shires of England. We managed to adopt a lot of their culture, history, traits, and a lot of their linguistics, but we actually managed to come up with our own language here, and we call it Newfoundese. <laughs> now, the first three words I want to introduce you to is what I call prog, puttock, and glutch. Prog is a Newfoundland word for food. It's for your puttock, your stomach, and you're going to glutch it back. It means you're going to eat it. This evening, your prog is what I call Newfoundland steak. It's actually Maple Leaf Bologna from Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why we call it Newfoundland steak, though, is years upon years ago, the kid that would have this on their sandwich growing up would be considered the rich kid, the royal one. The kid that had lobster on his sandwich growing up would be considered the poor kid. Mm -hmm. And that kid would be so poor that if he didn't wake up on Christmas morning with a heart on, he had nothing to play with at all. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of us had Atari growing up, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Anyway, I do need you to take a small bite of Newfoundland steak. Do not worry about it if you're a vegetarian and there's not that much meat in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a good old hot dog. <laughs> I use screech. I burn off all the alcohol. I added some Cajun seasoning, some old red wine, and I finished it off with saffron. Who does that? The bologna? Wow. I do. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. If you can't eat it all, that's okay, but it's just like a small little hot dog. So, uh, ah, hot dog. In 1497, there was a man by the name of John Cabot. His real name was Giovanni Caboto. He was an Italian explorer. We know him as John Cabot because the English paid for his travels, and that's just how the English wanted his name to sound. In 1497, John Cabot sailed the Atlantic on his boat to Magic, all the way from Bristol, England, to Bonavista Bay, Newfoundland. And when he arrived here, he saw lots of activity in our water. He didn't know what was going on, but he dropped his bucket down to fill it up with water. And when he came up to the top of the boat, it was filled to the rim with codfish. Word got out fast, how plentiful the fish were in our waters, that they traveled from all over to settle here and to catch the fish and to salt the fish and to trade the fish all around the world as a means of survival. In one place in particular that we traded with was with Jamaica. Because in Jamaica, they make rum. And we love rum. <laughs> we loved it so much, we'd actually get that on that wharf and we would kiss the fish goodbye, knowing it was coming back to us in the way of rum. So in keeping with that time and honor tradition, I have a little buddy for you to meet. Where the guys hear this? This right here is a real Newfoundland codfish. Given the chance, this fish could have grown to the height of six feet tall and weighed as much as 130 pounds. This fish will not grow any more than this because it's dead. <laughs> it's frozen. And it's perfectly in my freezer. Now, the significance of this particular fish, why I love it so much, is my 17-year-old daughter, Bella. She caught this out in Twillingate over the summer. And when she saw what was happening that day to all the other fish, getting gutted it and filleted, using their cheeks and their tongues for restaurants. She wanted her fish, this fish, to become the most loved fish ever to come out of the waters of Newfoundland. And I promised her I was gonna make that happen. I do need you to pucker up and give the fish just a little kiss. Do not worry about anybody taking your picture or video doing so. Whatever happens here in St. John's today will certainly be on Facebook, YouTube, <laughs> Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and TikTok, no one <laughs> sister. While you are kissing the fish, make sure you hold the poles long enough to see a flash or hear a glitch. <laughs> Otherwise, you will hear those horrible words. Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> now, we are slowly coming out of this global pandemic. So if you do not feel comfortable kissing the fish, I gave you a napkin that you can cover your mouth with. Because you're all family, I'm pretty sure you will go ahead and do this. Mm -hmm. I still take the chance of the health department coming on very strong with me, blaming me on a new variant, possibly called COVID. <laughs> <laughs> this whole thing started with somebody eating a bat, remember? It can continue on with somebody kissing a fish, but we're willing to take that chance here tonight. <laughs> Yvonne, you're going to go first. Are oh, you ready? Great. Think about Fuck it. You want to go first? You want to go last? Yeah, I'll yeah. go first. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Woo! <laughs> Is that long enough? I, I love how yes. you close your eyes when you... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now I can see it on my eyes. 
That's good. There we go. I know it's cold. Oh. Okay. Now, like I was saying, we used to trade our fish with the Jamaicas for their rum. And it was a very strong barrel rum. In fact, it was considered a test of the man if they can drink this without screaming, passing out, or having a heart attack. They were considered true men. Or women, or transgender, or non-binary. Yeah. In fact, Screech got his name down on the south coast of our province, where one night we were serving up our hospitality to a U.S. captain. He drank the shot, he yelled at a great big yell. The sergeant came on running into the room and said, who yelled out the god-awful Screech? And there was a Newfoundlander who was sitting at the bar that said, Screech boy, this is the Romney son. And that's how Screech got his name. So I never got you to sign any waiver form, so try not to get any on your skin. <laughs> <laughs> and we can't have a drink without having a toast. So, just so you know, it was a little bit over four years ago, I had the honor of meeting and screeching in here at Christians, the late and great Anthony Bourdain. Mm -hmm. He came and he put me on his show, Parts Unknown, and in front of a viewing audience for an entire week of 120 million people, he changed my life and my business forever. After the ceremony was over, I did have the opportunity to sit down next to him and have a few pints of beer and get to know him. And just so you know, if you know who he was, he was exactly the same person in person as who he was on television. He was jovial, articulate, intelligent, and it's an awesome experience when you can meet your idol and then your idol meets up to huge expectations. Mm -hmm. I have no idea why he did what he did. I don't think anybody can answer that question. But it does go to show you never ever know sometimes what's going on in other people's heads and the demons that they face and fight every day. So always remember to be kind. I like to dedicate my toast to him and say here's to health in your company and one for the lasses. Let's drink and be merry all that of our glasses. Let's drink and be merry but that's to refrain. Your may or may not ever all be here. Up to the lips, over to Gums, look out, go it. Here she comes. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Okay. You are past the trees, but you're not out of the woods. Uh -oh. <laughs> Before I let you go, I gotta teach you a small little phrase. <laughs> okay. I'll give you an idea of our dialect here in Newfoundland. The shortest conversation that you're ever gonna hear between two people goes like this. All right, smart? Nah. This is a full conversation. <laughs> in order to understand it, though, you have to envision two fishing vessel captains crossing each other in the early morning gut. One fishing vessel captain looks over at the other fishing vessel captain, and he says, Ernst Mern? And the translation is, did you catch any fish this morning? And the response, nah. Any idea what that might have meant? No. None. Close. It means no, I didn't catch any fish this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, we would have said none or no. We speak English too, you know. <laughs> I'm going to try to teach you something a little bit easier. Something that you can actually use while you're here in Newfoundland and take back to Ontario, and that's a by. In Newfoundland, this is a very, very common expression, and it basically just means I agree. You folks can use it in any situation where you're talking to a Newfoundlander and you don't understand what they're saying. Just agree with them. It's easier to agree with a Newfoundlander when you don't understand what they're saying than to ask them to repeat what they just said. Because if you ask them to repeat what they just said, they will say it exactly the same way. <laughs> <laughs> so what saying. Let me give you an example of another conversation that you might hear in Newfoundland. Someday, what? Hey, what? That means the weather was nice today. I agree. No. Let's say you didn't understand what I was saying. The same conversation would have gone on like this. Someday, wa, what? Someday, wa, what? Someday, wa, what? It goes on like this forever and it's incredibly painful to watch. Now, <laughs> it's harder to say than what you think. It's not a boy, it's not I boy, it's not I buy. It's a buy. Give it a shot, Ivan. A buy. Don't use a questioning overtone. Remember, <laughs> you're agreeing with me. <laughs> Try it again. Hang on a second. <laughs> Hey, bye. Hey, bye. This is good. This is the pass. Hey, bye. This is perfect. Oh, okay. oh. Say it like Lauren. Be like Lauren. Hey, bye. No. Oh. <laughs>
You put an accent on the A and the by. Okay. Try it again, Avi. Oh, I'm gonna do that. Avi. No, I'm not there yet. You said perfect. I don't know what no, you're good. Avi. No, now you're at this. Okay, you're from Ontario, right? Yeah. And in Ontario, they have an electronic store. They're called Best Buy, right? You've been to a Best Buy. Everybody's been to Best Buy. They sell appliances yeah. and electronics. Can you yeah. say Best Buy? Best Buy. I'll say A Buy. A Buy. Perfect. Perfect. Oh. Best Buy. A Buy. Oh my He's God! He, he shops at a Best Boy. Yeah. That's okay. Best nice. Boy. A Buy. A Buy. No. <laughs> In Jamaica, they say a bois, and that is more of a greeting, a right? A bar. A bar. A bar. That's right. Sounds like, it sounds That's like you're from Kilbride. Okay. <laughs> now that we got it, kind of, we're going to go along to the graduate level phrase. So when you go back home and they ask you when you went to Newfoundland, and you got screeched in, they're going to ask you, is your screech? There's only one proper response for that, and that is, did I use me old cock and long, may your big jib draw? So is your screecher? What? Yeah. <laughs> the correct response time. was oh, yeah. A-Y. I just taught you that lesson one minute ago. Yeah. You said <laughs> when you don't more. understand, you agree. In order to agree, you say a boy. I taught you a lesson. I wanted to give you an application. It's the same learning process that they use in Rosetta Stone, and it's very effective. <laughs> I'll slow it down. I'm not talking too fast. You're just thinking too slow, but <laughs> we just had a we just had a big shot of rum. So up along, being the rest of Canada, you might say indeed I am, but in Newfoundland we say deed I is. I need you all to say deed I is at the count of three. One, two, three. Deed I, I is. is. Next part of the phrase is me old cock. No. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> this is not grade six health class. <laughs> cock is a shortened form of the word cockney, which comes over from Old England, meaning my good friend or my good buddy. What you're saying is, yes, I am my good friend. You're going to say, did I is me old cock at the count of three? One, two, three. Did, did I, I is me old cock? cock? It's not my old cock. It's me old cock. <laughs> old my old cock means something totally different. The last part. Thank the phrase is, and long may your big right, jib you. draw. You see the jibs before sale on the schooner, so as long as drawing when you do good as wish for good luck. What you're saying is, yes, I'm a good friend, wish good luck. You're going to say, did as me old cock, and long may your big jib draw. Got it? No. Oh, okay. Once I the correct response, well, I've been a bye. 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 Actually, got you saying it wrong. Now. That's, know, just, that's so not. bad. I'm going to say it. Then you're going to say it. We're going to get through it in three simple segments. I'm going to use this to keep the beat, okay? This is like, oh, Lord. It's kind of like an ugly stick without all the bells and whistles. Okay, I say it, then you say it, okay? This is like keep the beat, okay? What's that called? This is on a piano. TikTok. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a metronome. metronome. Beat I is. Okay, in unison, please, oh. with a little bit more <laughs> conviction, okay? <laughs> Say D die is. D die is. Me old cock. Me old cock. And long may your big jib draw. And long may your big jib draw. And now the play you all have a I have your certificates. You've earned them. Before I pass them out, I have one final rant that I'd like to share with you. These are a bunch of important facts about Newfoundland, and they're all true. So please try to remember them and share them whenever possible for fear that someday they may be forgotten. Newfoundland was the first province to respond to the Titanic distress signal. It was 110 years ago. And at the time, Newfoundland was its own country. Now as we stand unified with Canada, we're the first province to respond. Newfoundland was the first place to discover proof of the theory of the continental drift. We're the first to host a transatlantic flight, and we're the first to have wireless communication in the entire world. We are the oldest rock in the world. This is the oldest city in North America. Water Street is the oldest street in North America and the Royal St. John's Regatta, which happens on the first Wednesday of August every year, except last year and the year before that. <laughs> it's now considered the oldest non-continuous sporting event in North America. We are considered the most generous people in all of the entire country. We are considered the funniest people in all of the entire country. We are considered the sexiest people. <laughs> this was another opportunity to say hey, bye. Hey, According to McLean's magazine, we're also the most sexually active. Ha, 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 ha. 
A Newfoundlander Whoa. invented the world's first artificial ice arena. A Newfoundlander invented the gas mask. A Newfoundlander was once a governor in northern Rhodesia. That is Zimbabwe. Uh -huh. And there was a Newfoundlander with Abraham Lincoln at Gettysburg. We're the only place in the entire world to have four identifiable flags. We have our own encyclopedia, our own dictionary, our own pony, our own dogs, our own cultural publication, the good old Newfoundland Herald, and let's not forget 9-11. Yeah. When Gander Newfoundland welcomed into their hearts and into their homes, 6,700 stranded world travelers. Yvonne, yeah. Jim, Lauren, Chase, welcome to Newfoundland. Woo! Also, the shot glasses that you consume your own from, these are for you to take with you as well. Oh, thank and uh, you. these will hold your certificates from getting wrinkly, and your shot glass from getting broken. Okay? So just take off the top. This is the top, that's the bottom. Take off the top. Put your shot glass in upside down, and then your certificate full long way. But don't do it yet. I want you to have your certificates in your head. Thank you.